In conversations with youth, it is not uncommon for older people to quickly, sometimes within two minutes of our conversation, offer their opinions, solutions, and sometimes even correction. Good intention though it may be, it often limits our conversation to trading information and we miss out on a chance for our lives to really impact one another. Proverbs tells us to answer before listening, that is folly and shame. I realized over the years just how poor my listening was and how much harder listening is than we may think. To win our youth, we must first listen to them. So here are three things that help with our listening, particularly to the youth. Number one is to be a safe person to talk to. What that means is that the person is safe from our unsolicited lectures, general assumptions of their generation and prejudgments of their motives or immaturity. Do we believe they can and will grow? Or are we only looking to confirm our suspicions about them? Being a safe person means we first receive them for who they are, giving them the space to share without judgment. The second thing that helps listening is not to make the conversation about ourselves. Do we hijack the conversation by sharing our stories or telling them what we have learned in a situation like this? What is much more effective is to give them the gift of our attention and care and to encourage them to share even more. This opens up the pathway to a deeper conversation and connection. Tell me more about that. Or what I heard was this, is that accurate? Asking such questions communicates that we are really listening to them and the details of their experience are important to us. It tells them that we appreciate the incredible privilege of knowing them better. Proverbs tells us point blank, fools have no interest in understanding, they only want to air their own opinions. If we can resist the tendency to share what we know, we can then steward the gift they are giving us which is the sharing of their hearts. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When we know more where their hearts are at, we can hopefully have access to what they truly value. The third thing that helps in listening is to know why we need to listen well, which is that listening to someone may eventually open the door for us to point them to God. As a youth pastor, I often receive calls from the youth needing to tell me something. From miraculously surviving car accidents, to the effects of various substances, to dramatic breakups, to bad decisions and sexual behaviour that leads to years of deep regret. I've learned that being a safe person to speak to and learning how to listen on a person's worst day may eventually help me turn the person's attention to how God sees their situation. They know then it's not about how I see them, but how God sees them. For those of us who are not so young, it is true that youth are prone to think they know more than they actually do. They also hate to be told this. There are times we may have to use a heavier approach to warn them of danger and to mark clear biblical boundaries. But our goal is clear. We are to encourage one another and build one another up. And in humility, to hear their hearts and then to point them to what they really need and that is a God who is holy but is also compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And to the youths, we can really learn so much if we also humble ourselves to learn and sometimes to listen to not just the words but more importantly, the heart of the older ones. We can do our part to bridge the gap. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may you help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak, and that we would in every generation learn how to win the hearts of the younger generation before we can win their souls. May we be given the privilege to point the next generation to their Heavenly Father. Help us as we pray this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.